$110,000 in the last 90 days is how much we generate with this resale niche. In this video, I'm gonna break down three of the best niches for you to choose from so that you can do something similar. First, I'm the thrift king, and yes, I turn trash into literal cash. I take items that people no longer love and appreciate, and I give them to people that actually love and appreciate those items, ultimately increasing the value of the items within returns to cash in my pocket. And so essentially what I do, that's exactly what I do. And so here's why this is important. First and foremost, the resale market is anticipated to double by 2027. That's super important, right? Secondhand shopping has become extremely, extremely popular because of the dying trend of fast fashion. People don't want to support things that are made in China with child labor child slaves, people that are getting super, super underpaid. So instead, they're just deciding to buy some of the remaining items that are just getting thrown away by people that no longer like these items. And the craziest thing is, is there's a, there's a surplus of inventory. There's a bunch of different stuff out there within these business models because there's a lot of waste. There's, I mean, right now, I think it's like 92 million tons of clothing goes to the landfill, 13 million tons of furniture goes to the landfill. So there's a huge opportunity out there right now. Okay, so essentially, I'm breaking down some of the best niches to choose from. But number one is sneakers. Personally, I used to resell sneakers when I was in high school. I like the business model. I wouldn't mind owning a sneaker resale shop, but the reasons I don't like it is right here is number one is low margin, right? So I'm gonna sell some sneakers. Well, I'm gonna get them for 175, sell them for 200, 225. I might make, make 50 bucks. Now, if I can keep that cycle in motion and that's not something that breaks down, I'd be open to doing that. However, if that is, you know, I'm gonna sit on a pair of sneakers like I was in high school school and I'm going to make 50 bucks every month. That seems unnecessary, right? I can put my time other places. And number two, high capital needed just to kind of keep up with that. If we really want to make 100, 200, 300 grand. We're going to need to invest probably at least 100 to 200 grand into inventory. And we're going to have that cash out working for us at all times. Uh, number three is highly competitive and super saturated. Personally, I believe everybody wants a sneaker business. If they could, they all knew they could have success. They would all have a sneaker business just because it's so cool. And you could potentially use your product. So that's one of the pros you could potentially use your product. And so that's pretty cool. And it's super, super trendy, right? So like I used to wear my shoes and out swap and upgrade into other shoes. So that was really cool. Now, number two, the second niche I actually like, and a lot of people sleep on is furniture and home goods, right? So the reason why this one's super, super important is because when we're selling furniture, everybody needs furniture. When we're selling home goods, every woman wants their house to become a home. And so essentially they come in and they spend money and they just like to spend money. I personally like selling to women because they love to spend money. That's what they do. That's just their therapy. They go shopping and they spend money. And so I appreciate that. And I want to continue to encourage them to do that. And I want to give them things that they can buy. And so essentially within this niche, I built out infrastructure to support it. Uh, it was a furniture and home goods resale business model. I've since pivoted away from that business model. But while I was doing it, it was the core concept of my business and it generated roughly $800,000 throughout the duration of that time period. Okay. And so some of the cons are it's big items and they take up a lot of space and so you're going to need a dedicated space for this which was number three you need a dedicated space you will not be able to run this out of your home and if you are your spouse or significant other is going to be rather upset with how many articles of furniture that you have for you to really make a good margin personally i don't like people coming to my house just to do business with me but i understand okay number two it's going to be hard to scale so you know where are you going to get high quality low cost furniture at between 10 and 20 percent of your inventory cost it's going to be very hard for you to do that at scale. Now there is ways to do it because I've done it. Okay, so I did just make a video about this. I don't know if it's coming out now, but by the time you watch this, hopefully it's out. It's called Re Becoming a Resale Partner Secret Niche to Explode in Reselling in 2024. Okay, and then number four, all your sales are gonna be made locally. So if you live in a very small area, this is probably not gonna be the best business model at scale. You know, probably a little bit better for bigger cities where you have a lot of different people that are interested in furniture, maybe even a transient city where you could sell a bunch of furniture to people that are moving to to and from that location. Uh, cities like Los Angeles, New York, Austin, these would probably perform very, very well within this business model. Pros, high ticket, and then second, in demand. Everybody needs a couch, everybody needs a dresser. You're gonna need that stuff, right? You're gonna need the lamps, you're gonna need the, the desk, you're gonna need all that stuff. You're gonna wanna get a discount on it. And sometimes you're just gonna wanna get very unique items, right? So personally, my couch only cost me about 300 bucks. I did buy my couch from my thrift store as well. And I've had that couch to this day. It's a beautiful section 
promotional that I got for 300 bucks from my store. Now, personally, we could have went up on the price, but anyways, the last one, which is what I've changed my business model to completely focus on is the clothing niche, okay? And the reason for that is because I saw it's the most scalable model, right? It takes the least amount of space so I can add more and more inventory without increasing costs. Let's just say I was to get a storage unit, I could put a bunch of clothes in there and not increase costs. I could probably have two to 3,000 articles of clothing within that storage unit and my cost stays at $200 a month versus having 2,000 articles of furniture, nightstands, dressers, couches. Yeah, I mean, your, your cost is gonna continue to rise when you're trying to keep more inventory. For the clothing, it's not gonna rise as fast because clothing is a little bit smaller, okay? So I really like that. Now, there's also subcategories within the business model. You have a little bit older ladies. I don't remember exactly what that's called. You have your more trendy clothing like Y2K and grunge, and then you have your vintage, right? And so, you know, it's people that appreciate all of this. Now, I think the key to success is dialing in on one of those niches, then opening up to support a little bit of all of them. But what I found is I really love just their clothing in general. Um, and so cool. So some of the pros are to include it's in demand. Everybody's gonna go buy clothes. You can never have too many clothes from my understanding. You go out, you're gonna shop, you're gonna buy some cool stuff. Cool. All right, number two, you get the ability to capitalize on trends. Right now, one of the trends is secondhand shopping. Fast fashion is not in, secondhand shopping is in. Essentially, you can capitalize on that and you can market the Y2K and some of the older clothing that people no longer like, like Echo and Eonce and Jinko and all these different brands that people, you South Pole, like people would make fun of you a couple years ago for wearing that kind of thing, now is a very, very in demand item that, I mean, South Pole that people used to throw away is now South Pole that can command 15, 30, 40, 55 bucks for that particular article, especially those pants with the graphics on the side of them. Those are in now, right? And so you get to capitalize on that and there's tons of inventory, right? You probably have some South Pole in your closet right now that you just haven't got rid of. I personally probably have some Echo somewhere. I don't know where it's at, but I probably have some of that stuff. All right, so there's tons of inventory. 92 million tons of clothing goes to the landfill every single year. So there's plenty of articles of clothing that we can divert into our business and ultimately help us hit our goal. All right, and number four is local and online presence. Not only can you sell through vendors, okay? You can become a vendor and sell at markets every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can sell your articles in person to people for a very, very low cost, as well as, you know, selling out of a storage unit if you want people to come by and see your stuff. You can also sell online, which I think is very, very important because you're gonna build out your social media presence. You can sell on Depop, Poshmark, eBay, and they have millions of people within those platforms that are interested in some of the items you might have. Okay, so that's super, super beneficial. Uh, and then number five, it's fashion, so it's very, very marketable. Everybody likes fashion, especially women. They love clothes, they want to look nice, they wanna look trendy, they wanna be you know, in hip or hip per se. And so essentially you get to capitalize on that because you have a clothing business, but you're not having to come up with any brand. And so number six, you don't have to create brands. If you see brands that you like, you just go out and try to find more of those brands at scale. Now you have to be a little bit creative if you're gonna do that, but you could just find those brands and just sell those brands that already have the goodwill with the general public, right? And so number, some of the cons would include uh, finding consistent sourcing strategies or consistent sourcing partners so that you can get items at scale is going to be relatively challenging, especially if you're limited on cash flow and you don't have the time to really put into the business model. And then secondly, the trends may change. But ultimately, I love this business model. This quarter, it generated $110,000 in revenue for me. It's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to explode. And I'm actually going to continue to iterate and come out with more subsets and more niche type businesses within this category, specifically in the vintage and the Y2K niche, just to further capitalize. If you like this video, give me a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're going to choose one of these niches, comment below which one you're going to choose. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.